Stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on an LG OLED TV with a heat sink? Well, Panasonic's got one, Sony's got one, and to no one's surprise, LG looks like it's getting one too. <laughs> what am I talking about? Let's talk about where there's smoke, there's fire. But first, a message from our sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Your family has been spending more time at home surfing the internet. Surfshark VPN is my choice for families that need unlimited connections on unlimited devices. That's key. For the price, nothing beats Surfshark because I believe it is the best bang for the buck. I like the clean web feature the most as it blocks all those pop-up ads because, well, let's face it, your kids are all over the internet clicking on everything they see. Thankfully, Surfshark includes those protections as part of its package. So sign up today with my coupon code FOMO and you get 83% off. That's $2.21 per month, including three months free. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try geo-locked content for Netflix and Disney+. Plus, and if it doesn't work out, no problem. The sign-up link is in my video description below so you can give Surfshark VPN a try. Today, we're going to talk about LG OLED TVs, their future OLED TVs, how they can get better with a heat sink, and why I think there is going to be a heat sink coming out on these OLED TVs. First, for many of you who are not familiar with a heat sink, the Sony A90J this year is the brightest OLED TV that Sony has ever made and the brightest OLED TV in the USA because we only get one model with a heat sink from any manufacturer at all. That would be the Sony A90J. Outside of the USA, where you can get the Panasonic JZ2000 or JZ1500 or GZ2000 or HZ2000, those OLED TVs for Panasonic have the heat sink. And it was Panasonic that introduced this concept to the world a couple of years ago. What a heat sink does is allows you to push that OLED panel harder, brighter, and minimize and reduce the likelihood of burn-in and the shortened life of an OLED TV because, frankly, the hotter an OLED panel gets, the shorter its life. The heat sink pulls out that heat. Heat sink, right? So in the USA, we've never had access to a TV or an OLED TV with a heat sink before. Well, before this year. So this year, 2021, Sony introduced the A90J OLED with a heat sink and it works very well. I have the A90J back there and I'm testing its brightness and I'm telling you, it is matching brightness for brightness with the QN98 and much content. And let me tell you, that A90J not and let me tell you that A90J, definitely specular highlights where it's supposed to be bright, matches the U8G in many scenes where in an HDR movie, those specular highlights better be bright. It matches the U8G in many scenes that really impressed me. I'll show you some comparisons later. Surprise, later is now. In the sandstorm chase scene from Mad Max, a 4000 nit movie, the A90J matches the peak brightness of both the QN90A and the U8G. That's the heat sink in action, folks. Yeah, without a doubt, the Sony A90J in bright HDR content like Mad Max or Aquaman, where you have these bright specular highlights, right? The lightning strikes and the explosions. The A90J does match the U8G and the QN90A. That's quite impressive. Now in a future review that I'm preparing right now for the A90J, you'll see these comparisons where, wow, OLED has really hit QLED LCD TV, LED TV level brightness. Now, obviously, it cannot maintain that brightness, and the brightness doesn't cover the entire screen, right? Comparing it to the LG C10, I definitely notice the difference in brightness. It is very visible. I can't go back. Moving forward, I'm definitely going to only buy OLED TVs with a heat sink. So the question is, well, what selection of OLED TVs have heat sinks moving forward? We don't get the Panasonic, but maybe next year, it looks like LG will introduce their TV, OLED TVs, with a heatsink <laughs> to nobody's surprise. Okay, now what am I talking about? Why do I say LG is introducing a heatsink on their OLED TVs? Well, thanks to one of my viewers, Brad, he sent me this on Twitter, and the article 
It doesn't clearly say anything about heatsink. It doesn't say anything about all the TVs, but what does it say? LG has trademarked for its TVs, its display technologies, the word, the plate. The plate. Is that enough information to lead me to conclude that heatsink cooling is coming to the LG OLED series and not just any series? I suspect it's going to drop down to the C series. So there's a couple of things to unpack. First of all, why would the plate lead me to believe it's a heatsink? And why the C series and not something higher like the G series? So let's start with just the plate. Why I think that's a heatsink. Well, to no one's surprise, obviously LG knows this heatsink works very well. They saw Panasonic do it. Then they see Sony doing it. And they are, ironically, the only maker that doesn't have a bright TV. They're relying purely on the chemistry and a regular cooling system without a heatsink does not get bright enough. It simply does not. And comparing my A90J to the LG C10 beneath it, even displaying full screen, it doesn't get as bright as the Sony A90J and definitely specular highlights are minimized as a result of the OLED TV not being able to be pushed a little bit harder. So LG for sure is going to come up with a heat sink technology of some sort. The question has always been when, and it's clearly getting closer and it makes sense to me that the plate is that technology. And now for why I think the C series will be getting the plate. Well, first let's talk about the G series. The G series has always been their thin, lightweight, aesthetic, you know, it's for cosmetics, it's for display, you're hanging on a wall. Adding a plate to it, <laughs> it's gonna be thick, heavy, it doesn't make sense. The gallery series has always been designed to be a looker. It's not designed to be a bright room performer. Now this year, it happens to be brighter than the C1 only because, and you guys of course have heard me talk about this or rather complain about it, LG has specifically pulled the C1 performance down to let the G1 be a little bit brighter this year. But next year, doesn't matter. If the C1 gets the plate, it will be the brighter TV. And the G1 could continue being a gallery series to be placed on a wall or hanging on a special beautiful tripod stand. But the C series is their performer. Whether it's gaming or movie watching, it's perfect because between let's say the B series, the C series, and the G series. The G series having this additional plate, it's just doesn't make sense for a gallery museum quality TV display. The C series will get this cooling system. Now, A series, well, this allows it to separate itself from the B series and the A series, right? Without the plate, the B series could be pushed a little bit brighter than it normally would be because it definitely will not get close to a TV, an OLED TV, with a cooling system. So this allows the B series to be kind of similar to the C1 this year, right? Next year's B series could not have the plate and still be brighter than a normal TV, that's the A series. So you can see how this kind of lines up to separate the four TV models from LG OLED. The A series, the dimmest with 60 hertz. B series, they could push as hard as they can, but since there is no cooling system, it will never jeopardize or cannibalize the C series, which has the plate super bright. And the G series is a gallery series after all. Now the pricing of these two may end up being very similar. If anything, the C series may be more expensive. So that's something you guys have to consider as well. The B series will end up being a great performer. Now, yes, it's all speculation, but it's fun to speculate. And if we don't speculate, what is there left to do? But let me ask you, don't you think this makes sense for the LG OLED TV? Because moving forward, they have to incorporate a cooling plate regardless. But if they do incorporate it, where does it go? Definitely doesn't go in the G series, right? That's thin, that's gallery. But if you think I'm full of hot air, then you tell me when do you think LG will be introducing its heatsink series of TVs? Because if not the plate next year to the C series, then when? Because Sony TVs this year in 2021 
are killing LG OLED TVs just in terms of brightness. We're not going to talk about color accuracy or any of that other stuff. On brightness alone, without a heat sink, the G1 cannot compare to the A90J. And without a heat sink, the G1 and the A80J are pretty much a match because Sony can just push the A80J as bright as LG pushes the G1. Because the C1 cannot be as bright as the G1, obviously, that leaves the A80J as the better value proposition for movie watching and streaming. I know C-Series, G-Series has the gaming features. So if you disagree, let me know why. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like. And after this, there's more here, here, and here. Until next time, stop the FOMO.